Good morning and welcome to the Splash Live, Greater West Bloomfield's only local morning show giving you exclusive access into people, businesses, and events in your community. I'm your host, Maddie Mustin. We are live daily weekdays at 9.30. Before we dive into today's show, every week we highlight someone, an educator, student, business, or organization from our Greater West Bloomfield community going above and beyond. If you would like to submit an entry, you can uh, scan the QR code on the screen and fill out the Google form with the person's name, their contact information, and reasons why they should be recognized for our person of the week. Now let's dive into our community events that are going on in Greater West Bloomfield. The first event is the West Bloomfield Township Public Library has started their virtual programming that includes a variety of interactive events for all ages. Some of those events this week are today at 10 a.m. They are hosting their talk called Returning to a New Normal, Building Resiliency. If you would like to register for these events, you can do so by going to the West Bloomfield Township Public Library website and their events calendar page and register by clicking on one of those events. The West Bloomfield Township Public Library also has those fantastic tender topic and literacy kits that you can rent out through youth services. If you're looking for to either enhance your child's literacy or teach them some of those tender topics, you can contact the library to schedule a time to rent out a kit of your choice. West Bloomfield Parks is working with the West Bloomfield Diversity Task Force to bring a free new event to celebrate Black History Month. Black History 101 Museum is open to all ages. This event is on Saturday, February 5th from noon until 3 p.m. at the library. Founded by Dr. Khalid Al-Hakim, the Black History 101 Mobile Museum is an award-winning collection of original artifacts of black memorabilia, and they will have a special lecture and exhibition at 10 a.m. West Bloomfield Parks also has a couple other events to celebrate Black History Month, which starts today in February. Uh, they have their Love Yourself Wellness While Black event open for ages 16 and up on Saturday, February 12th from 9 until 11 a.m. On Saturday, February 26th, they also have a 10 to 2 p.m. event at Orchard Mall. They have their Black Expo. For any of these events, you can head over to the West Bloomfield Parks website to register for all of those events. Our last event that we want to look at is the Sylvan Lake Game Nights. This event is perfect if you're looking for something fun to do this winter. Whether you go alone or with friends, the Sylvan Lake Game Nights are a great way to socialize safely with your neighbors and friends. Sylvan Lake Game Nights take place every Wednesday when there is not a Sylvan Lake board meeting in the community center. Game night starts at 5.30 and will go to about 9 p.m. at the community center. This event is open to all Sylvan Lake residents. You are welcome to bring any games that you would like, as well as they are also hosting a Uyghur tournament, so you can contact Amy DeCantor or Feather Buchanan for any of those details. If you have an event you would like us to feature, you can send us a message on our social media pages at Civic Center TV and Facebook at Civic Center TV 15. Coming up, I'll be talking with Dr. Jennifer Casey at Dedicated Senior Medical Center. But before that, we asked business owners around the greater West Bloomfield community how they have been impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. They told us how they have been adapting their business and practices to keep up with the changing industry. Let's take a look at what they had to say. With 2022 in full swing, the pandemic has impacted the local Greater West Bloomfield community for almost two years now. We asked local business owners to describe how they have been impacted throughout the pandemic. Pandemic obviously affected all industries, all professions. Uh, it affected chiropractic a little bit differently than every other profession because we're hands-on. There's no working virtually, there's no telehealth, there's no phone room in. We're, you know, we're, we're an in-person, hands-on profession. So when the pandemic first started, we definitely noticed and we had to make some changes, changes in how we were sanitizing the office, changes in our flow of patients through the office, limiting the amount of people in at a time. And since, you know, since things have initially started to go back to normal and now started heading back into the pandemic um, protocols, we've been seeing a very different type of patient where our office was traditionally people with musculoskeletal pain, spinal pain, and then people for maintenance and wellness that wanted to maintain their spinal health, keep the spine healthy proactively. What we've noticed over the last year, year and a half, two years, is a very different type of patients. We've been seeing a lot more kids, a lot more adolescents because they were going to school from home. So we transitioned from being a bricks and mortar store to online during the pandemic. And um, it gave us an opportunity to be doing a lot of virtual stuff with our customers and be able to still 
still have that personal touch and that personal guidance for assessorizing, but to be able to do it virtually gives us another area to expand to other uh, clientele. A lot of our customers actually in the area moved out of state, so being online gives them quick access for that, and then all our social media with Instagram and Facebook gives us opportunities to be able to reach new um, opportunities. Um, I think for for most uh, for most businesses, uh, for us, um, the event part of our business was in fact shut down um, for a large percent portion of 2020, um, and um, it's also shown um, how we've had to change a lot um, on the plant side of our business too. Um, so I, I'd say that we're not going to fully know what the shakeup's going to be uh, for a little while further, um, but it definitely changes the way that we think about. About investment, it changes on how we deliver um, products to our customers, and it also changes our assumptions as to what the future might be. I would say the biggest thing for me is my ability to work with people without being in the same room. I have lots of clients that either are fitness or coaching in some way that we work through virtual. Uh, it's still one-on-one. -on -one. It's very personal. Um, you can be anywhere in the world. Uh, to do the fitness training. Uh, it's safe and wonderful, and it makes a lot of sense for people. That door has been opened and has stayed open since day one of the pandemic, and people are really leveraging the idea of being on the phone or uh, uh, virtual as one other way of getting themselves where they need and want to be on their terms. We wish those local business owners that have been affected by COVID-19 the best as they head into 2022. Reporting for the Splash Live, I'm Maddie Mustion. Thank you to all those business owners that give us some insight into how the ongoing pandemic has impacted them and how they have learned to adapt. Later on, we'll be checking out how the West Bloomfield Township Public Library is helping parents and guardians talk about tender topics with their child. But before that, we'll be joined by Dr. Jennifer Casey at Dedicated Senior Medical Center. All that and more after this short break. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. In the face of COVID-19, staying healthy is important. And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective, and with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov slash flu. Can I ask you a question? Uh why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. And now, back to The Splash Live. Welcome back to The Splash Live. I'm Maddie Mustion. It is now time to talk with Dr. Jennifer Casey at Dedicated Senior Medical Center about their center and how they're helping seniors this winter. Dr. Casey, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Maddie. Happy to be here. Dr. Casey, could you begin with explaining what Dedicated Senior Medical Center is and tell us how you guys are impacting the community? Yeah, Dedicated is so excited to, to be in the Detroit area. We have six offices uh, located in and around Detroit, so that, and we cater to specifically the senior population. We look to take care of those that are 65 and older. We like to say that we honor seniors. We treat them like members of their, of their family. We bring our seniors back to see their doctor at least once a month, because we know with that what we call a high touch model, where we bring patients back frequently, we're better able to know our patients. We form that really strong doctor-patient relationship and build trust with our patients and the patients build trust with their doctor. And we really, like I say, we treat, we treat our seniors like they're members of our family. We fully believe at Dedicated that seniors are the most special population and they deserve all of our time and attention. We look to keep seniors out of the hospital by bringing them into our office first so that we can take care of things early on and keep them healthy, happy, and at home. 
The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has affected the entire community as you have seen, Dr. Casey, especially the seniors. How have you seen the impact on your patients there at Dedicated Senior Medical Center? Yeah, unfortunately, we're still dealing with this nasty COVID pandemic. And, and as we all know from, from listening uh, in the last couple of years, that this particular virus uh, can can hit and injure and um, cause more problems for seniors than than other other patients of other ages. So it's important to us that we are, are proactive in protecting our seniors. We have vaccinations in all of our clinics. We're able to test patients uh, for COVID in all of our clinics. And we're able to connect people to treatment, um, whether it's medications or some of the IV treatments for people that have COVID. And Dr. Casey, at Dedicated Senior Medical Center, you guys have a lot of services and programs that you can provide for your senior residents and patients there. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the programs and services that you guys provide? Yeah, so we, we like to keep everything um, under one roof if we can. So um, in addition to offering primary care uh, for our patients, outpatient primary care for treatment of diseases like hypertension and diabetes and high cholesterol and such, we're, we're able to do several things within our offices as well. Again, we like to keep our seniors uh, have healthy, happy, and at home and keep them from having to run to other specialists or the hospital or the emergency room. We're able to do x-rays in all of our centers. Um, so if there's any concern for like a pneumonia or a broken bone or anything, we can do that right in our centers. Uh, we're able to give a variety of medications in our centers uh, as well as IV fluids. So if someone's not feeling the greatest and they come to our center first, we may be able to treat something before they'd have to go to the emergency room. We have the ability to do the ultrasound in all of our centers and every patient that we take care of gets an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of their heart. That's just one of the things that we do for all of our patients so that we're able to check for higher risk diseases that people may not know about. Patients may not know that they have a problem with the valve in their heart or that they have a blockage in their vessel. And if we're able to catch that, then we're able to work with the patient to treat that to keep somebody from having a heart attack or a stroke. So we find that it's very important that we do a lot of screenings for our patients as well. So similar to that echocardiogram, we're able to screen for our patients for problems with their nerves um, in their feet and hands or what we call neuropathy. We do screenings for dementia, screening for breathing problems. Every patient also gets an EKG that looks at the electrical activity of the heart. All of our physicians as well do a variety of, of small procedures in the office. So whether it's a biopsy of a skin or removing a skin lesion, we do a lot of joint injections for pain that seniors may have, particularly in the shoulders um, and the knees. Uh, so it, it's nice that we're able to be a one-stop shop um, for our senior citizens. Dr. Casey at Dedicated Senior Medical Center, for your patients that you help there, have you seen anything, um, a service or a program that you guys provide there that has been um, you know, more frequent during the ongoing pandemic or something that in the past year or so that um, your patients have been coming to you more and more often for? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think that the biggest thing um, with, the, with the pandemic is that everything's a little different for, for all. Um, we like to bring our patients into our office, but we do have the ability to do telehealth or, or virtual visits. Um, and in addition, we're able to help senior with, seniors with the resources to do that. Uh, so if someone doesn't have a Wi-Fi capable device in their home um, or unable to do that, we're able to provide tablets to our patients so that they can stay connected with us. We provide transportation for our patients um, to, to get to and from our centers and to and from other appointments that they may need. Um, that's an important piece. We know a lot of people um, sometimes will miss doctor's appointments or can't get to the doctor. We wanna make sure that we're taking down any of those barriers um, that we can for our patients to bring them in. Um, certainly the pandemic has, has everybody frightened, especially frightened to come into to some healthcare facilities. We, uh, we call it ludicrous safety. We are, we are very specific about how we screen all of our patients um, and anyone coming into our centers. Like I said, we're able to test patients um, and connect them to treatment if they do have COVID. But our centers are, are big and bright and open. We have set rooms for people that, that may have an infectious disease that, that we can clean and keep people um, safe that way. We're able to, like I say, connect people to testing. We're able to assist patients with masks. Uh, we're able to assist patients with pulse oximeters to check their, their uh, blood oxygen levels should they become sick. And really, I think the biggest thing that sets us apart is that patients are um, connected to their doctor. 
patients have their doctor's personal cell phone numbers. They can call their doctor any time of day, 24 seven, if they have a question. So really that right there, I think sets us apart and puts us better able to, to, take, care of, to take care of our patients here in Detroit. And Dr. Casey at Dedicated Senior Medical Center, you guys also host a variety of community and educational events. Can you tell us a little bit about those and what those provide to your patients? Yeah, so um, but we do a variety of events from bingo to crafts that we do in our centers. All of our centers have a community room um, that can be used for um, a whole variety of things. Um, that we like our center, our, our seniors to come into the center and, and feel like it's a home, like it's a community center, not just a doctor's office. One of the really fun things we do are what we call doc talks. And that's where we have our primary care physicians either out in the community or in the centers uh, talking to seniors about their health. It may be about nutrition, it may be about skin care. We've talked a lot about vaccinations um, in, the, in the last several months. Uh, but those doc talks are really a good way for a senior to get to know a little bit more about their health, um, to be able to ask uh, any questions they have about their health or about the, the concern of a particular disease. But the doc talks are, are really a lot of fun. We really want to see ourselves, like you say, as, as a community center, as a home uh, for our patients and, and not just your typical doctor's office. Dr. Casey, as we wrap up, is there anything else you would like to share either about the center or uh, yourself as a physician? Yeah, yeah. We're just like, like I said, we've, we've been here uh, since July. We're looking to build additional centers, but we have our, our current six. Um, I just know that this is the type of care I want my parents to have. I want my parents to have a strong relationship with their doctor. I want their do my do parents' doctors to, to love them and to treat them like members of the family. And I know we do that here at Dedicated. So we have plenty of room in our offices for additional patients. Feel free to reach out to, to any of us or stop in one of our centers um, and check and see. We'll make sure that you can meet the physicians that'll take care of you. Uh, we can be, be found on the web at www.dedicated.care. Uh, and that's a good way to get some additional information and, and come on in. So uh, like I say, we're happy to be here and we're happy to bring better health to the seniors in Detroit. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your morning and joining us, Dr. Casey. Great, thank you, Maddie. Once again, I was joined by Dr. Jennifer Casey from Dedicated Senior Medical Center. If you're looking for a creative way to talk about tender topics with your child, the West Bloomfield Township Public Library has a great tool to help you with topics varying from divorce to physical differences among people. The tender topic kits at the library can help you navigate those tough conversations with your child through books, puzzles, and tools. We talked with Emily Vickers, Youth Service Coordinator at the library about these kits. The winter season can be hard on a young mind, but inside West Bloomfield Township's public library, someone is hard at work, making take-home kits for literacy problems, social issues, and more. I talked with Emily Vickers, who walked me through some of the tender topic kits available at the West Bloomfield Township Public Library. So this kit is the visual impairment kit. So in this kit, there are books that talk about um, differences. So this one is saying uh, it's okay to be different by Todd Parr, which is kind of just the theme of this this kit. Um, this one is called um, Charlotte's Spectacles, which is about wearing glasses. That's part of a visual impairment. This little guy right here has a visual impairment of wearing glasses. And this is a seeing eye dog. So he has a little harness and um, something that you might need as a visual impairment. These are kind of cool because as a visual impairment, you might use touch um, and feels for something that you need to rely on because you might have a visual impairment that um, that you can't see as well, so you rely on touch. And this is um, a social emotional matchup puzzle that's understanding yourself. So it's a little bit different because you're trying to figure out what's different about you, but also making yourself unique and special and knowing that you're still unique and amazing and you're, you're still awesome. Each kit is filled to the brim with books, activities, and toys that cover a range of approaches for broaching difficult questions as a family and finding healthy ways to grow as a child. 
This Tender Topic kit is about separation and divorce. And so inside this kit are a few books about separation and divorce that might be helpful. This one's called My Two Homes. This one's called Why Do Families Change? Our first talk about um, separation and divorce. This one's called Facing Divorce. These are just some books that might be helpful to read with your child about starting a conversation about how our family might look different or might be changing a little bit. This is an adult book that might be helpful about co-parenting. That might be something that you want to talk about with um, the other adults in your household about how to um, work through some um, adult <laughs> conversations about how to co-parent in two separate households. Um, we also have two um, puzzles in this, this kit about how families might look different um, in two separate households. We also have a very cool um, puzzle, which is a social emotional puzzle about understanding myself because things might be a little bit different. And then we have a very cool, which are my favorite, these magnetic families. And they all are different and all the families can look different. And there might be, um, <laughs> there might be really tall family members and very short family members and they all look very cool and I absolutely love them. So yeah, they're very cool. Yeah, Emily, they are pretty cool. If you'd like to pick up a kit for your home or a friend you know, you can put a kit on hold over the phone or rent one out in person at the West Bloomfield Township Public Library. Thank you to Emily Vickers for giving us a tour of their tender topic kits. Reporting for The Splash Live, I'm Calvin Brown. Those tender topic kits are available at the West Bloomfield Township Public Library. You can rent those out, and if you have any questions, you can contact Emily Vickers there at the Library in Youth Services. We're now joined by Diana Mohi, an attorney here in Greater West Bloomfield Community, helping her clients navigate divorce, child custody, et cetera. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Diana. Thank you for having me. Diana, can you first tell us a little bit about your path to becoming an attorney and what inspired you to pursue this occupation? Well, I think that my path to becoming an attorney started with just my love of reading. As a child, I just gravitated towards reading books. Um, I ended up in high school reading War and Peace, uh, books that you know were, were hundreds of pages long, and I just really enjoyed the experience of basically seeing the world through someone else's eyes, seeing uh, other people's arguments and um, the reasoning for, for things. You also see uh, whether it's a novel or something factual, uh, you just have a different way of seeing the world after you've read that book. Diana, can you give us some insight into the types of clients that you are working with at the moment, whether that is someone that is struggling with divorce, child custody, et cetera? So I'm a divorce and family law attorney, which means that not only do I help with divorce, but also other family law issues. For example, guardianships and conservatorships for a caregiving role. I also do prenuptial agreements, um, as well as uh, child support and child custody. And little known things that I may also do is a grandparent uh, visitation. For example, if you are uh, a grandparent, you have also a right to visit with your grandchild, assuming that you're not gonna cause harm. And I may potentially be able to assist you uh, with getting visitation with your grandchild, especially where the parents are either in the middle of the divorce or um, there's some kind of, some barrier to you having access to your grandchildren. Diana, if there is a viewer looking for an attorney to help with some of these issues that they might be having, what is the initial conversation that you have with them and what type of advice do you give going into the process? Well, it's always fact gathering at first. Uh, I can't know until I get the full picture. Every situation is different and uh, the challenge with the law is there's not really a one fits all. Yes, there can be laws promulgated out there but in the end, I have to know what your situation is and whether it really requires a court intervention. Um, so, uh, and based on that, then I start uh, suggesting to the client what a path might be that would be helpful to them to help them find a solution to the challenge that they're facing. Diana, you also have a blog on your website where you talk about frequently asked questions or concerns that a client might have. Can you first explain uh, what was the inspiration behind starting that blog in addition to helping your clients that you work with? 
Well, many people just have basic questions that are a uh, no brainer for someone like me. I mean, as I've said, I do this for a living. Um, some things that are commonplace in my world are not so common in other people's um, knowledge of the world. And so my blog aims to basically start by answering the very simple, basic questions and to um, kind of present to people that I um, am doing my best to become a more of an expert in my area. Uh, obviously, um, you know, every uh, attorney provides a different kind of service in that, for example, divorce and family law is very personal. So um, you're, you're gonna have a, perhaps a closer relationship with that attorney. And by reading my blog and my post, you maybe you'll get a flavor of my personality and see if it might be a fit for you. And what are some of those recent blogs that you've written um, on your website there? Are there a couple of topics that are more frequently asked than others? And what are some of the things that you've been currently writing about? So there has been a trend with um, older gray-haired divorces, quote unquote. And with that, people tend to have more assets as they grow older. And so I have to understand those assets, how best to divide them and how to advise clients um, and what path to go to um, to come to resolution in their divorce. So that's one example. Um, in terms of other things, I mean, there's almost nothing new under the sun in a sense. So um, there might be certain concerns that, that come afresh, such as um, with child custody issues, there are certain um, concerns in today's environment about vaccinations and all that and how it affects someone's rights in a, in a custody dispute or in an existing custody agreement. So um, those are the kinds of things that I might highlight uh, because they are just practical concerns, uh, everyday concerns that people have in their families and their loved ones. Um, I also think it's very important to um, be aware of what's going on in your family dynamics. Uh, for example, uh, perhaps that you've delegated uh, the caregiving of an older relative to a certain family member, but no one's o giving oversight to that situation. And so I also aim to just educate people about the, the pitfalls um, of certain situations. Diana, as we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to share about your practice that may be helpful to our viewers here on The Splash Live? If it is a family-related issue, um, I may handle it. Otherwise, I may be able to refer you to uh, someone who, who does more uh, of what that situation is. But not everything is, as I said, a one-fits-all solution. And uh, I just would request the opportunity to, to see if I can assist someone or point them in the right direction. Um, because it's never a good idea to just go it alone and uh, you, you only know what you know. So it, there's no harm in asking and getting a little bit of direction from someone who does a certain area uh, constantly, 24 seven. Whereas this is something you may just have stepped into because of you know the life changes in, in, that are occurring. Well, Diana, thank you so much for joining us this morning and taking time out of your day to talk with us. Thank you so much for having me. Once again, I've been joined by Diana Mohi, an attorney here in the greater West Bloomfield community. That's it for today's show. Thank you again to Dr. Jennifer Casey at Dedicated Senior Medical Center and Diana Mohi, an attorney here in Greater West Bloomfield for joining us this morning. Special thanks to our Zoom producer, Jared Clark, for coordinating the Zoom and making sure our guests joined us. As always, thank you to Kevin Brown, our board operator, for making the show possible each and every morning. And thank you for joining me as we explored all the people and events in our Greater West Bloomfield community. As always, you can make sure to tune in line Monday through Friday on Civic Center TV on Comcast Channel 15 and AT&T Channel 99 to catch up on what is going on in our Greater West Bloomfield community. You can also check out any of our archive stories and interviews by visiting civiccentertv.com under the Splash Live tab on the website. You can check out all of our um, stories and interviews that we've done over the past years as well as daily here on the Splash Live. 
You can also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at Civic Center TV 15 and Facebook at Civic Center TV 15. We're also going to be live on My My TV, that is My Michigan TV daily, Monday through Friday at 9.30. You can check that out on your smart TV as well as on their website at My Michigan TV, MY Michigan TV dot com. For all of our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kiko Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Maddie Mustin. Thank you for watching to Splash Live. If you are struggling to afford your internet bills during the pandemic, there's a temporary government program that may be able to help. It's called the Emergency Broadband Benefit, and it provides up to a $50 monthly discount on your broadband bill to qualifying households. Find more information about the program, including if you qualify and how to enroll at FCC.gov slash broadband benefit or call toll free at 833-511-0311. A public